Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is the unboxing of the Meepo V2P 30 inch. There are many videos like it, but this one is mine. Actually, uh, I don't think I've seen an unboxing showing the newest deck and hopefully this, this is your first time seeing it too. Um, so let's go ahead and move on and open the box. It comes nicely packaged with some foam on top. Move that out of the way. The first thing I noticed about the skateboard were the red anodized screws. On the Meepo website it shows purple screws, but I personally like the red. I think it looks better against the black color of the board, making the red color really pop. When I powered it on, it looked like it had close to a full charge on it, so that's pretty cool. The remote feels pretty nice in hand, and the matte finish of the plastic makes it feel high quality. There is a nice wall mount included that you can hook your board onto while it charges. That makes it pretty convenient. An instruction manual is included. It's short, but it's actually quite informative and it teaches you a lot about the skateboard. I also bought some bash guards on the Meepo website that I will install later uh, to protect the nose and tail from normal wear and tear. There is a skate tool included along with a couple of T-handle Allen wrenches to help you tune your board to your liking. Pretty convenient and they're small enough to fit in your backpack. The white LED light for night riding looks pretty legit. It has an internal battery that you can recharge via USB. We'll actually see how well it performs when I actually go night riding. The Meepo decals and wristband look cool and I wonder how many people actually wear it, but I probably won't. This looks to be the mounting hardware for the wall mount. Also included were extra 5mm screws for the hub motor covers that hold the swappable urethanes in place. Pretty convenient if you happen to lose one while you're riding. And finally there's a standard charger that charges at 42 volts at 2 amps. Uh, does anyone know if there's a fast charger available? Everything looks awesome, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the deck. The length of the new deck is 30 inches. Same as the old, but obviously it has a new overall shape with a kicktail. The width of the board is 9 inches at its widest point. You can see the sides do have a slight curve to them that run lengthwise. From these angles, you can actually see the ground clearance of everything. The deck has 4 inches of clearance off the ground, and the ESC enclosure has 3 inches of clearance. The battery enclosure has 2.5 inches of clearance, and the trucks have 1 inch of clearance in the rear and 1 inch of clearance in the front. The thickness of the deck with the grip tape on is about 12.6 millimeters, so I'm guessing without the grip tape the deck itself is about 12 millimeters thick. You can see the truck's bolts are completely countersunk flush with the top of the deck, but the enclosure bolts stick up just a little bit. I guess I'll find out if this interferes with normal riding. The concaveness of the new deck looks pretty good. It's about 8 to 9 millimeters, which should keep your feet locked in pretty good when you're doing some hard carving. The trucks come set pretty loose from the factory and when I loosened the nuts until they were flush with the top of the bolts, they both have been tightened exactly three turns. So I'm 6 foot and about 200 pounds, so I doubled the amount of turns to 6 which felt better for my weight and a good starting point for initial riding. For how short it is, there is some flex in the deck which should help in softening the bumps but I'm sure it's way less than a longer deck that has more flex in it. The kicktail actually looks beefier than what I imagined when I first saw it on the website but only time will tell how durable it is. Underneath there's a warning sticker with some precautions and recommendations to use protective gear. Thank you Meepo for caring for us. I of course took the sticker off but not without leaving some adhesive residue behind. Some goof off should take this off. When I hold the board from the kicktails handle, I have about 3 to 4 inches of ground clearance. And when I switch to the front truck, I gain an additional 1 to 2 inches of clearance. I'm 6 feet tall with, I guess, average length arms? You can of course tic-tac using the kicktail, 
A little awkward on carpet though. This should help in changing direction in a tight space. With the deck being higher than the normal freestyle deck, the angle is a steep 45 degrees if you were to break using the tail. Of course the handiest feature of the kicktail is popping the board up for an easy grab and carry. When we look under the board you can see the battery enclosure and the vented ESC enclosure. The rear trucks mount the big hub motors with 90mm swappable urethanes. The hub's motor features smart turn-on that's connected to the right rear motor. You'll immediately hear the board turn on and you can see the current battery level on the meter. The 2.4 GHz remote features a nylon plastic case with a rubberized matte finish that feels pretty good in the hand. The back has a snazzy Meepo sticker that hides a screw. You can see the small bind hole button used to pair the remote to the board. The top has a multi-select power button that allows you to power up the remote as well as view the writing mode you're in with one push and change the writing mode with two pushes. If you choose to go reverse, there is a button for that. The push, pull, throttle, and brake toggle switch has a medium spring tension that feels pretty good when you're moving it, which should give you smooth acceleration and braking. The V2P editions of NEPA boards now feature swappable urethanes that mount to the hub mortars. It's pretty straightforward and removing them, just take off five screws. The urethane material itself is offset on the metal sleeve and there's a little arrow drawn on there to show you which direction it goes on. There is some blue thread lock on the spare screws I saw when I was unboxing, but there's no thread lock on the installed screws. I think I will apply some blue thread lock later to prevent these screws from vibrating loose. The front wheels are 90mm tall and have a drummer reading of 78 on the A scale. One thing I did notice were the front wheels didn't have any side to side play, so I loosened the axle nuts a quarter turn to free up the bearings. Yes, I am using a socket wrench because the nuts were on there so tight that it broke the included skate tool. After I loosened the nuts on the front wheels, they spun a lot freer. So that about wraps it up for this video. What did you guys think of the new deck shape? Do you love it or do you hate it? Leave a comment and let us know, or if you have any other questions or concerns, let me know. This is my first electric skateboard, but I'm not a total e-ride newbie. This is my Gotway M10-3 electric unicycle and I love it. I recently did 45 miles on it in San Francisco exploring the city and 55 miles on it exploring Shanghai when I took it to China. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like and share buttons. If you are new to my channel, feel free to subscribe and catch all future videos I will post. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace!